Cougs house. It appears the Houston Cougars might have lost in the transfer portal. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs. Today, the podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Andreth. And whether you're a Houston fan or just a hater who came to stop by, thank you for making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. And if you want to make sure to join the conversation and you don't know what to say, tell us if you're the kind of person that remembers their dreams. It's going to make more sense in a second, I promise. But we have a fun show to, for you today, uh, brought to you by FanDuel. Uh, Monday, uh, Monday afternoon, it was reported to KPRC. Uh, I, I think it was KPRC. I haven't seen a whole lot of secondary reporting on it, but that Samuel Brown uh, is going to enter the transfer portal after spring ball. Um, now reports indicate he's going to the portal. I haven't seen anyone. I haven't seen a whole lot of secondary sources bumping that up. He's not officially in yet. It doesn't look like, um, but I will say that there are also not a bunch of resources, resources out there turning it down. Sam Brown has not taken to social media to turn it down by any stretch or anything like that. Uh, this hurts a lot for Houston. He is arguably the best wide receiver returning. Uh, some people like Joe Manjack or what have you. He's inarguably one of the best two wide receivers to come back with any experience. Right? Uh, he had a 1,286 yards, seven touchdowns, 103 catches in his two seasons at Houston. And in that entire time, he was always like fairly far down the totem pole in terms of uh, who was going to get the ball, who was going to get the targets, and things like that. I, Bears mentioning, we probably all assumed he's going to be the number one wide receiver next year, and those numbers would have probably only gone up, at least the touchdown numbers, right? Last year, he was kind of iconically this guy that caught the football a lot, got some good yardage, but couldn't get in the end zone until he got in, I think, three times on the year last year. Um, now, I want to preface this by saying part of the reason that this isn't headlining anything is, A, I guess it's not formalized yet. It's not in the paperwork, not turned in, et cetera, as of this recording. Um, and also, for what it's worth, um, at the end of the day, I, I hate to break it to folks, he's probably not going to be the last Houston Cougar with experience to enter the portal in this window. There's a spring window now after spring ball and before summer workouts. We're going to see guys from a bunch of different programs, uh, you know, that gave new coaching staff to try or what have you in the spring practices to enter the portal to find the opportunities better for themselves. I'm typically not a guy that's like upset with kids for finding that opportunity in the transfer portal that is best for themselves. Uh, you know, you only get a limited amount of time to play college football. You ought to have some saying where you go. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, that being said, I don't have like intel on specifically which players are looking or whatever. Just logistically speaking, Houston went through a major culture and coaching change in December. They just had a series of spring practices. The guys on the team now have a good look at what it's going to look like. And Sam Brown's just the first big name to say he's jumping in it in this window. Obviously, we lost Matthew Golden, last year's number one receiver, in the first window. Um, I say all that to say that there will probably be others. Unfortunately, I don't want anyone to. I kind of like the kids we've got. That's just the way it feels like is college football these days, right? As far as Sam Brown's case, I think a lot of people jumped to NIL money, chasing the bag. Da, da, da. That's a very easy, hot button thing to jump to. I don't want to necessarily say it's 0% that either, right? Like, I, obviously nothing is a hundred percent the main only factor or anything like that. Right. Um, I will say I was assuming after watching some Barbe film over the course of the spring, after watching some games at Willie Fritz, Willie Fritz is a defensive coach, but things that he's places he's coached over the years. And then after watching the spring game felt validated and saying, this team is going to run the ball a lot more next year. Um, seems going to run the ball very well, I would argue, next year. Um, even a lot of their passing in the spring game on Saturday was off of RPO reads where the run is clearly the first read, right? 
Then you factor in that, you know, we're hoping to see Donovan Smith back to that power runner he was at Texas Tech, it makes him a true dual threat guy. The Zion Chris, his backup, is a clear dual threat guy. Shoot, Caleb McMichael is probably the third string guy, it looks like, and he had some wheels on him, too. Um, you see a lot of running game happening with Houston Cougars, I guess what I'm trying to say, right? And if you're a wide receiver, if you've got, you know, a season or two left in college football, I don't know that if you're trying to show off what you can do for the pros, you want to be in a system where you may be catching five or six balls or five or six targets at that rate. A game, I, I kind of understand it from that standpoint. I wish it weren't happening. I, I, Sammy, I wish if you could hear me out, I, I could talk you into all the pros and cons of, of staying. I think there's a lot more pros. I will say, though, that as a wide receiver, this offense is not as friendly as the one folks signed up for, then we're signing up to play for Dana Holgerson. Now, I understand that logistically and in the way it actually played out, Holgerson didn't run that air raid system in the same kind of, you know, throwing the ball 50, 60 times per game or whatever, anything like that um, in recent memory, especially not well. Sam Brown was here, right? But I think we signed up for Holgerson. You knew he was a guy that could get guys open. Remember how many different times we hit the mesh concept across against University of Texas, right? Like Houston finds ways to seeing guys open at the wide receiver position. Dana was always able to get receivers into Houston on that on that recruit pitch, right? The guard's kind of changing. Uh, the culture is changing. This team's going to be a little bit grimier, dirtier, and that includes running the ball more. Um, now, that doesn't mean there aren't going to be any wide receivers. Frankly, guys in the wide receiver spots can make great plays out of this RPO stuff because the defense has to be concerned with the run. That's why I actually think that had Sam talked anyway, I, I, I think from a playing perspective, being the number one receiver is actually a really good thing because you're going to get treated less, I don't know, with less double teams and stuff than other number one receivers, right? Because of the you know, attention the run game gets, but I digress. Sam Brown, it appears, is heading into the transfer portal. Um, again, we'll confirm it when it's confirmed, but right now it really does look like that is where things are headed. In the final segment, I want to start spitballing ideas I've got about replacements, including if they even do it. But first, as Houston's putting together their roster, you're probably looking to put together a roster for your small business as well. And when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are the right that are right for your role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools you need to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who are actively searching for new jobs but might be open to the perfect role in a given month, over 70% uh, of LinkedIn users are not using other leading job sites. You get access to a whole different group of people. Uh, if you're not looking at LinkedIn, you're simply not looking at the right place. LinkedIn knows that small business owners are wearing a bunch of different hats and might not have the time and resources to hire. So LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college today. All right, now I found a pair of receivers already in the portal in the spring window that I think are actually fairly decent fits at Houston, even though they're dramatically different. Um, and that's frankly to say that like we're kind of in the early process of this you know, late spring transfer window. You're going to see more guys enter in the coming days from a bunch of different schools. There are, you know, a little over a hundred uh, Division One, One A football programs, uh, FBS football programs. Don't call One A anymore. Um, and out of those programs, I'm betting you see a couple thousand kids looking to fill spots. Other kids moving up from FCS. A D2 kid, a JUCO kid. You're going to see kids trying to change from G5 to P5 or vice versa. You're going to see thousands of names in the transfer portal. I'd imagine over the course of the next couple of weeks. Uh, Sam Brown being the first from Houston in this window. But again, it's going to be a lot of people in there. Currently, 
with current names. The first guy I noticed, a guy named Eli Stowers, a uh, kid from Dengar, DFW, uh, up 45, I guess the other side of Dallas. And uh, he's got two years left. He initially was recruited at Texas A&M as a tight end, got redshirted, didn't play much, then transferred to New Mexico State and played quarterback, at least on their roster. But then statistically, he had 35 catches for 366 yards and two touchdowns. So he eventually does switch back to being a pass catcher. Uh, he's leaned down some to 6'4", 215. He's a frankly good-looking athlete at that. He just entered the portal last week. He's looking, I'd imagine, if he's going to concede that he's a pass catcher. This is me, you know, hypothesizing. To get back to the Power Five, he was at a and as a tight end. I think that makes a lot of sense. And, honestly... I think Houston's a great place for him to come do that. As a tight end, he's experienced blocking, experienced pass catching. Houston and the Iman Yagavi system, the Kevin Barbe system, and what we know that Fritz wants to do, even though he's a defensive guy, will typically have like that 11 and 12 personnel. So we'll have one tight end at least, if not one in H back or two tight ends on the field. We saw a lot of that with both Matt Burns and Malik Carr in the spring game. Why not come be a part of that rotation? There's always going to be someone on the field at that position, and we know he can catch the ball. So I think that he makes a lot of sense there. Again, just entered the uh, portal last week. Doesn't have a whole lot of film, admittedly, um, and, and I think that that's kind of could work in Houston's favor, right? Almost a diamond in the rough kind of thing. Great frame, great size, great hands. So we'll see what Eli Stowers does. Again, Texas area kid, uh, DFW area kid, state of Texas. I think it makes a lot of sense. Kind of the opposite side of the, side of the speed spectrum, opposite side of the size spectrum, opposite side of the wide receiver spectrum is Will Nixon. Um, Will Nixon is 5'11". He's got, you know, if you told me he's 5'10", I'd believe you. He's very stocky build, big biceps and shoulders. Um He's got a year left. He initially went to Nebraska from Waco Midway High School uh, and then transferred ultimately to Washington last year. Had a lot of team success, obviously. In high school, he was a running back, um, and he's done a little bit of both in college. 54 rushes, 13 catches for 445 yards last year at Washington. He entered the portal on March 29th, so he's in the same window, although he missed Washington's spring practices and games uh, to join in. I wonder if he fits in kind of the same kind of he's multi-positional but can play some receiver kind of way. Um, he's more, a different receiver than Sam Brown was, but he can play more of that traditional slot size. He's got some stockiness to him. You can imagine you see him out there blocking on the perimeter. I also think um, being a running back – or having that in his back pocket plays a key role here because of how much Houston's going to run the ball. I don't want it to be anyone, but someone's going to break a shoelace at some point in your sub, right? And having guys in your roster that have at least done that before feels important. Um, you know, obviously these two guys are very, very dramatically different sized, and I could see Houston going either direction. But another theory I've got, and this is where I'll leave you, is I don't know that Houston necessarily goes either direction. Um, with Boogie Johnson, Joseph Manjack, Mikhail Harrison Pilot, Jonah Wilson, the wide receiver room still got a lot of talent. Uh, and frankly, all four of the guys I just said, I just mentioned, could be starters in a four-out system, and I don't think Houston's going to run a lot of four-out. Um, and so what I imagine you could argue, and I think it's worth looking at, is where else can you find value in the transfer portal, right? I think you've solidified Donovan as your starter um, at quarterback. But outside of that, can you find another just high-value guy, another uh, you know high-end G5 guy that had a great spring and is looking to get into the P5. Are you, can you find an FCS guy uh, that, you know, you know, dinged up his shoulder and the fall, but had a great spring and is ready to go now and, and it, ready to show off some you know, spring tape to show it. Can you find that, you know, high caliber, you know, top five or 10 team in the country guy that thought this is going to be their spring to play 
linebacker or that this is going to be their spring to play corner or their spring to play tackle, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, at some big-time blue blood program. And then suddenly spring didn't go quite like they thought it might. The spring game, uh, they didn't get the reps they thought they would. And they're like, hey, I need somewhere I can play. And Houston's like, hey, over here, we got you. We got a great city, a great school, and we're building a great program. I think, honestly, while Sam Brown is not someone I'm excited to lose by any stretch, he's really good. I really was looking forward to seeing him be the number one receiver next year. I almost wonder if using that scholarship, that spot, on someone else at high value at a different position in the transfer portal might not actually make Houston any worse. And I think it might make them better next fall. Um, I know that that it's hard to think of losing your best player. At least your like biggest name brand player. You're, you know, a guy that's a potential pro at, at wide receiver, um, losing all of that. As far as the skill position, position goes, especially you think like, how is that going to make us better? But they got a starting tackle out of this deal. They're better. If they got another rotational corner, at least, they're better. If they got a true fullback H-back, they're better. There are several ways in which this goes in which Houston ends up being better. If you got a way that you think it happens, tell me in the comments down below. I want to thank Marin again for coming on today. Again, pre-order the book Dream, The Life and Legacy of Akeem Olajuwon. Link is in the show notes. Um, I want to thank all of our sponsors, our, our fan duels, our LinkedIn's. Monopoly Go is a fun one. That's a really fun one to be a part of. I want to thank you for waiting around a little bit later in the morning for the show today. I had to make sure we had all the links and stuff put together at the right timing of all that. But again, go get the pre order the book right now. We'll be talking with Mirren again about it in the fall when it comes out. Uh, Locked on Cougs is a proud member Locked on podcast. I mean, it's your team, our Houston Cougars, with or without Sam Brown. But with Marion Fader each and every day. Go Cougs.